Hello students. Today we will start with the second chapter that is the uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So once again I think you have to recollect PUC first year trigonometric functions which I come across. Trigonometric terms, all the formulas, maybe allied angle relations, submultiple multiple relations, compound angle and the basic relations of trigonometry. Once again, it's better you make sure that you have recollected all those uh, formulas. And this time, along with that trigonometry function, one more concept which already have come across recently, that is in the chapter relations and functions, the last unit, that is an uh, inverse functions. Numerical sums done on inverse functions. That topic also have to revise it. And once you are perfect, in trigonometric functions followed by what do you mean by function followed by what do you mean by inverse functions where you speak about something special 1-1 one, one and onto relation got it so then you can move for inverse trigonometric functions so to begin this chapter normally the students uh, will ask for the highlights and according they have planned here that is the first part, obviously we are going to learn here definition, wherein, you remember the domain and the range part. This domain and the range part, remember, it's very important for us, shortly in the numerical point of view also, one mark and two marks, we will be asking you, write the domain or give the domain and range for the various inverse trigonometric functions. As in how I move for the chapter, you can make out why this part I have highlighted here. Followed by we have sums as well as few property which includes even the properties I can say these are the few numerical sums also and so on. So properties will be proving it also and the sums also will be doing it. Coming for the exercise point of view in your text you find two exercises only that is exercise 2.1 and 2.2 plus the miscellaneous if we will uh, solve this question also it is well and good. So this should be the highlights and uh, coming back. I think more than the highlights of the chapter, I think I have to set your mind the pattern of questions which can be asked on this chapter in your trigonometry. The pattern. So, six pattern questions if you are perfect, then the whole chapter only are perfect. This is a pattern of questions which we can expect in the board exam. So, more than the highlight, I think uh, highlights of the chapter, I think you should know what you mean by the Pattern, how the questions will be given, how the questions are framed in this chapter. So that part I would like to highlight here. And the first part, as just now I mentioned, it's a domain and the range. Definition, one mark question definitely we can expect on this. Followed by we have evaluate. There's one more question. You can set your mind, evaluate. Okay, followed by the, we're going to ask you the properties. Definitely property either in two mark slot. Or in three marks, one question is always asked on the property. Followed by we have prove that. Numerical sums, LHS to RHS, LHS to RHS. Prove that question is a very simple one because you know the question is also given. And what is the target to reach? That is RHS is also given. So this question, the prove that question is quite interesting. Followed by we have uh, the question called simplify. This pattern question is very important because in calculus also, I mean differentiation, you will be applying these questions there. The method what we are going to do here, the same method you will be following in the one more topic, differentiation. Where you come across with differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions. That time, normally these all questions will be repeated there also. So it's well and good if you are perfect in this chapter only, this topic will be repeated once again in the differentiation. Last but not the least, I should say it is a solve for x. So these are six pattern questions. If you are perfect, then you are perfect in inverse trigonometry function. Now, in the board exam, in the board paper, we can see the marks allotted for this chapter. According to blueprint, it is eight marks. So here we don't find lengthy question. One mark, one question. Two marks, two question. Three marks, a single one question. So total we have 8 marks allotted for this chapter inverse trigonometric functions. Got it? 
So I think in the next video, let me continue with the what do you mean by function? I'll be asking you the definition. What do you mean by function? What, okay, what are the types of function? Modulus function, signum function, identity function. Similarly, what do you mean by trigonometric function? I mean the six function, sine function, cos function, tan function, co cosecant function, sec function as well as cot function. Once you are perfect in functions, and trigonometric function definitely i should ask you what do you mean by inverse function what's the condition for any function to have its inverse ella function go inverse irala a function enadru one one and on to agidre i mean if the function is bijective then and only then its inverse exist so that was, uh, that's what we have come across in the first chapter. Relations and functions in a chapter we already have come across. So let's go for inverse function definition. And then afterwards I think we can move for the inverse trigonometric functions. Okay. So next video let me continue. Thank you.